So here's the mission statement, and I keep coming back to this. We strive to restore confidence in breast cancer survivors while providing hope to the newly diagnosed. And I would like to share my story and explain why I'm so frustrated with trying to deal with the public with something that they consider controversial, where a majority of us that have breast cancer don't see this as controversial. It was shortly after Thanksgiving 2014 um, when I was taking a shower and I looked down and I saw the lump. I knew something was wrong, but my mind was protecting me psychologically. I hadn't breastfed in two or three years, so I thought it might be a calcified milk duct. I put off my checkup until January, protecting myself from what I feared. I couldn't possibly have breast cancer. It doesn't run in a direct line in my family. Cancer existed in my family, but breast cancer wasn't something my mom or grandmother on either side had. My aunt had had it twice, but my mom had cervical cancer. If I was going to get cancer, I thought it would be cervical. My general physician did an exam and then wrote up orders for an ultrasound. She wasn't real happy that I had put off my past mammograms. She said it probably wasn't anything, but to get the worry off my mind, it would be best to get imaging done. January 14th, I was in the imaging clinic. The last time I had done this, I was in and out. They did the mammogram, and shortly afterward, I was on my way home. This time, they had me stick around. It's probably nothing, the radiologist kept telling me. Over and over, it's probably nothing. If it were nothing, I would be sent home. I wouldn't be uh, lying on my back for an ultrasound guided biopsy. I didn't know what I was facing, even with the biopsy. I went ahead and had it done instead of rescheduling. I wanted answers. I didn't know it was going to hurt, even though there are countless nerve endings near the nipple. I didn't know I'd want someone there to distract me, or at least some headphones, earphones, so I couldn't hear the click of the biopsy gun. Yes, it's called a gun, and rightfully so. A big reason people should go to the gun range if they own a gun is to get over the kickback and sound a gun makes. The same can be said about the sound of the biopsy gun. It's probably nothing, the nurse reassured me, as she gave me instructions on how to heal following the biopsy. If it's probably nothing, then how come I'm going through quite a bit of something for you to be sure? I thought to myself. Five days seemed like two weeks or more. I got a report. I read it. I learned what BIRAD numbers were, and mine was a five. The news came on January 19th. You have invasive ductal carcinoma. Carcinoma equals cancer. They didn't have to explain the words. Invasive. It had invaded something. Ductal. It was in the ducts of my breast. And it was spreading. <clears throat> I had my first appointment with a doctor from my oncology team. What stage am I? Judging from the biopsy findings, they thought it was at a one or a two. I would have a lumpectomy followed by radiation. Then I was able to go on with my life. They had already referred me to the reconstructive surgeon that they collaborate with. Then she examined me. Um, hmm. This needs further evaluated, she said, something like that. It's a blur, so I don't remember the exact words. I just knew I was probably no longer considered a one or two. Another biopsy was ordered. MD Anderson likes to do everything in-house. Okay, I actually respect that. They don't want any word for it. They want to see for themselves, and after all, their name is on it. Biopsy number two was the same as number one, except my husband was there to distract me. Then there was biopsy number three. We need to see if it's spread to your lymph nodes. They did a sentinel biopsy, and it was found in my armpit. I had more orders where I had to go and get an MRI and a CT scan. 
a lot of waiting occurred when I was in these imaging and biopsy stages. My doctor, my breast surgeon, and her staff had my reconstructive surgeon meet with me in the meantime. They knew what they were doing, providing a distraction. My reconstructive surgeon became my silver lining. I was getting a deep flap. I thought tummy tuck never, um, never had I ever thought of having cosmetic surgery. The idea of a tummy tuck seemed out of reach for me and something for only the wealthy until I met with my reconstructive surgeon. It was truly my silver lining. It was my silver lining, but it could have been a much brighter silver lining. I stood naked with just a pair of blue panties on to cover my loins, turn left, turn right, face center. Did I just get booked? Um, I thought these were pictures to assess how best to carry out my reconstruction. Then came the pictures of ladies who had gone before me. No faces, just busts and tummies to show how the deep flight flap might look. I wanted to know more. I wanted more than their pictures. Who was this woman? Was she happy? Did she find a new woman in herself that she could be satisfied with? Or was she sad and depressed? When I got my diagnosis, I rolled over and over trying to get sleep. If I must go through with this, Lord, give me a purpose. Give me a purpose for how sick I'm going to get. Give me a purpose. For any of the pain I must face, give me a purpose for my family to go through this with me. I got an image in my head of the new me that I'd meet on the other end. It became my silver lining. I sort of had goodbye pictures that Thanksgiving before my diagnosis and the impersonable before pictures that didn't show my face. I went through a lot in between before pictures and my eventual after pictures. At one point, I just wanted to be done with it all. Then I faced my new normal. I had to process it. One day, I was finally ready to celebrate that I had made it. I had my reconstruction, but I am still working on revision. One side is longer than the other. I have no nipples. I have scars. My armpit is concave on the right because of the lymph nodes that they took out. They took out all my lymph nodes. There are dimples where my drains were. When I had my initial photo shoot, what I saw in the proofs is that beauty resonated from within and not necessarily on the outside. What I see in my what I see is my smile. What I want is for other women to see that they are beautiful after going through something like this too. When women who are newly diagnosed go to their reconstructive surgeon, I want them to see women and not just breasts, deep flaps, tram flaps, implants, or tummy tucks. We are so much more than that. There is a story behind each, and each of our before and after pictures. And I wish that the general public would understand that this is not the same thing as playboy posing. I wish that the people would understand that I'm trying to give women who are newly diagnosed hope that their life isn't over. Thank you.